Mindset Mastery, Episode 9. This man needs no introduction, but we'll do it anyway. Wes Watson, Watson Fit. So um, the way I like to do it is I want to let you go back as far as you want to go, and I want you to explain where you were at, where you're going, where you're coming from, and then we'll just go from there. Fucking man. America's most famous felon. People think that they've actually could experience what I've been through because they see my life. I show tidbits of... where I came from. If you guys don't know, I posted in prison in black and white for five fucking years every day on my Instagram until the day I got out of prison where I put up a color pic. But that was me emerging back into society and saying with the mindset that I created in prison, watch what the fuck I can do now. And I mean, it wasn't 12 months later that I was a millionaire and running an eight figure company 24 months later to now five and a half years out where I'm at today. Look at my fucking Instagram, Watson underscore fit. But um, where it started, I started as a surfer, skater, snowboarder kid from Oceanside. And the main thing was, is I wanted to smoke for free. I've everyone smoked weed. We drank. We're normal party town, Southern California. And I wanted to smoke for free. So I started slaying a little bit of weed. That weed sales turned into pushing packs. And I was good at it. I I watched Blow. I watched Mm -hmm. fucking Goodfellas. I watched fucking the gangster movies. I watched Belly. I, I grew up on these gangster movies where fools were pushing packs. And where I'm from, you're either a construction worker or you sell drugs. There is just nothing else that I even knew about. I mean, luckily, you guys have all these opportunities from people like me and Frank where we can show you how to kill it online. And you have online. We didn't even fucking have smartphones. There wasn't even the Internet. I remember when I was renting one of my first places downtown San Diego, and I was like 18, 19. That was when I had one of the first uh, flip phones that actually had the Internet on, and I was looking up places while I was downtown. This is before I went to fucking prison. But... um. Pushing packs, wanting money, turned into a desire to be one of the top drug dealers in my area. And I pushed anything. I mean, it, mm-hmm. whatever I get my hands on that I can make money with. From doing that, I, I was a millionaire before prison. A lot of people, you know, they maybe go to prison, they tell some fucking stories. But I had the range. I had the Escalade on 23s at, to high school I drove. The Escalade on 23s to fucking high school. I drove a Range Rover after that. The first, when the the first new body style Range Rover came out, had that. Like the next, the supercharged one came out, had that. I had a condo downtown San Diego, a little mini mansion in Encinitas. And I was doing my thing before prison. So a lot of people go to prison, they start telling their fucking baller stories, their gangster stories. I was already ready, really living that shit. So I knew when I got out this time, when I had flipped my negative mindset to positive, I was gonna be lethal. What you guys don't understand, this is me talking to the camera, this is me telling you guys right now, what you guys don't understand is you addicts, you people who have that struggle like me and Frank have had, you're the most powerful motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You'll do anything to get fucking high. You'll do anything to get drunk. As soon as you realize that anything you'll do, once you turn that from a negative mindset based on getting high to a positive mindset into business like us, you'll be one of the most lethal motherfuckers. And I just want you guys to know that. It's fucking cool that you say that because the first, so one of my, the, I found you obviously through another podcast that you're on and that was how I got exposed to you in, in the beginning. And I, I signed Andy up. Andy Frizzella, That right? was Andy's, right? Yep. Andy's and, a goat. Yep. And then I signed up. I signed up right away. I didn't even know what the fuck we were going to do. And then I was going through all your shit because I didn't really even look at anything. I just fucking went for it. And then I found the clip that set the where you just where you used to do the side profile with the, the pod. Chills, and you used to bro. go off and you would just say they're the most addicts and drug addicts are the most committed people. Most committed. And it fucking bro, nothing like, can stop them. It clicked. It clicked for me. Right? Like in that moment, bro. That's one of the first times in fuck, bro. I was sober maybe like seven years up to that point, bro. I actually cried when I watched that. I teared I, up. I, I start teared to up feel that it. when I just think about that. Video. That that click because, bro, the emotion, the rawness that you show in that moment, it literally personifies who you are as a fucking a man, right? And the level of fucking greatness that you can bring into someone's life is fucking unparalleled 
right? And then that's the thing. That's the shit that people need to just realize with this coaching shit. It's not about, or am I going to get an email? Am I going to get a worksheet? Am I going to get this? It's not a fucking rigid thing. It's do you want what this person has? And are you willing to go to any length to get it right? And that's where I was. That's where and even sober making good money. I, I was desperate still, bro, because I was fat. I was fucking not in the right state of mind. And you told me, bro, you said, bro, we got to change. You got to change everything. That's what you have to do. And that's when you were a little less busy. So there's more one on ones and shit like that. It was it was a little different then. But now the, the message is still the same. It's not diluted. That's the, the shit with you. The thing is, is your new life's going to cost you your old one. 100 percent. So you got to give up on that old life to live that new one. I've never seen a man successfully walk two paths. No, never once in my life. And everybody thinks they are. Look at Miami. They think they can still party, stay up, do the blow, drink and all that. And since they got the money, they think they're still successful. I see a herd individual still searching. I don't search. Literally, I live my life in complete peace and everything comes to me. These people are still searching. What are they looking for? What are they up at night trying to find? Yep. They're going to find it. It's going to be nothing good. It, it's true because like I had that, bro, I couldn't fall asleep at night. Like I had that restlessness. I'm seven years sober, bro, with a successful business and I'm fucking restless. I'm irritable, like discontent. Like I can't figure out why I fucking feel this way. And it's because the rest of my life was not in order. And that's the main thing that you showed me. You showed me that, bro, you cannot fucking be fat if you're gonna be fucking fully successful. You cannot be fucking not in the right mindset if you're gonna be fully successful. You need to fucking believe in something greater than yourself. There needs to be a spirituality aspect to this fucking shit. That's the, whole, the thing. The whole thing is you can't be out of alignment with your conscience. Exactly, bro. So the second you're out of alignment with your conscience consistently, you're doubting yourself. If you're consistently doubting yourself, you'll never be able to formulate that vision that is infallible. Like 100% people tell me stuff sometimes. I'm like, I don't even think that way. My mind does not go there. Some people will see success like us and I can look at their face and I know they're thinking, well, what happens when this stops? It doesn't have to, you stupid motherfucker. What happens if it keeps going? What happens if it keeps mm -hmm. growing? Your, most people's mindset is focused on it's good now, the bad has to come. It doesn't. Yep. It can keep growing and going if you're aligned with that, if your thoughts are that. I mean, what some people call a problem, I don't. So they may have be derailed by something so small that I actually would have saw as building material yep. for my next step. Yep. And that's why I kept going. That's fear. That's the fear creeping in the fear of not knowing what the fuck is going to happen. And that anxiety that comes when you're about to fucking win. That's, that's what I, I always tell people when you finally cross the bridge, the proverbial bridge of uh, personal development, when you finally cross that bridge, all fear is gone. Everything is accepted. Moments are just moments. And the future reality, no matter how good, no matter how bad, whatever, is just accepted. But you live in the moment to define the future that you want, to align yourself with the future you want and create the future you want. And that's something that prison teaches a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like most of you guys, if you walked in a level four chow hall or on any penitentiary yard in California, it'd be a rude awakening. It's food. Straight food. And, and just to speak to what you just said, like even this morning, like when I woke up, like I, I knew like, bro, we've become friends over, over our journeys over the last year and a half. Right. And, and you're my boy and I know you're going to come here. We're going to fucking crush it. That's obvious. But then this morning I'm sitting there and I start to, in a moment where I'm alone, I just woke up. I was, you know, I was just getting centered in the morning. I felt fear. I felt anxiety. But then I sat there and I was like, motherfucker, you're about to win right now. We're about to crush this shit. What are you doing, bro? Get the fuck out of bed. And then I swung my legs out of bed, got the fuck up. And here we are, bro. We, we hit a fucking well, lift and now we're here. Only time I ever really have fear is when I make a choice that's out of alignment with my future self that I really want to create. So you should have fear. All these negative internal states are just notifications for self-preservation. You're just getting a notification of fear. Like that fear is a notification that something is not aligned. So you just have to do the checklist. Thoughts, yep. actions, sick. energy. So sick. My thoughts, my actions, my energy. Mm -hmm. So at that point, Energy was off because thoughts were off. Thoughts were off because you just let that, you let it drift a little bit, but you got yourself back in check because you have a high level of awareness. Yep. Someone with a high level of awareness can change their life in one moment. People think that they have to exercise all this trauma and they have all this shit. You can have a breakthrough in one second when you work with someone like me who's transcended self. 
The only reason people are still stuck in their trauma is because they're selfish. They only magnify self. They consistently define themselves from their low frequency state. They never fully build a habit-based system that brings them to that high frequency self because your high frequency self will laugh at anything that tried to destroy you. I am, you can notice that in someone like me. I'm proud of doing prison time because I operate from my highest frequency mm -hmm. self. My highest version of myself is who I've defined myself as. These other guys who've done a lot of prison time, even though they may be jacked or they may be tattered, or they may look like the baddest motherfucker, they've defined themselves as the lowest version of themselves. They're like, I'm a loser, I don't make any money. And it's only because their habits are aligned mm -hmm. with being a loser and, and whatever. And, and but, but the whole thing is they define themselves as that so the whole point is, is that's what they carry with them all day. The whole, the whole main purpose is, is that if you define yourself as that high, you'll never see anything that's not aligned with you go walk in that path. And I just saw that in real time. We were, when we were downstairs and you were eating just now before we came up here, the, there was that person that introduced themselves to you. You introduced yourself back and you intro, when they asked, what do you do? You literally said, oh, I did 10 years in prison. That was yeah. the first 20, the first hundred words you said to this motherfucker. Yeah, but I'm proud of it. The <laughs> I other, get it. The, the other people... <laughs> They, a lot of people have their problems still, and it's it's really because they don't elevate to a high enough frequency to look down on their problems. Like, when you, I can get people to such a fucking massively a high vibration, high frequency, they look back at the craziest shit that happened to them and say, good, good, good. I'm glad it happened. And then most people, when they're, in a, they're beat up, they're losing, then they look back and they're like, fuck, that's what did it to me. Yep. That's, what, that's what ruined me. And then they harbor that feeling. But It's when a I, way out. When, I, when people ask me, what would you, like I've had people ask me, what would you change if you could go back and change one thing? And because of the mindset that I'm in and the, the work that we've done, I say nothing. I wouldn't change a fucking don't thing. don't need to. Let's get more. Let's fucking, let, good. Like you were just saying, like, good. We're fucking. Let it happen. And all right, so now get out of prison, you start your business. Ha, ha, what is that beginning phase? So just for, for people that are like, you know, so if, make, if you guys choice. don't get, if you guys haven't heard my story, I got out of prison with 200 bucks. They give you a, a check called gate money. They gave me a $200 check and I went to live with my grandmas. I hadn't been free on the streets for 10 years. So I go to live with my grandmas with my parents in a fucking, uh, in this, I live in the same room as my parents at 35 on a twin bed in their room. So in the corner of my parents' room, they have a queen bed, there's a twin bed, and I have one dresser drawer, a twin bed, and I live at my grandma's, I have no car, and I have 200 bucks. But I had been building my social media, I had a skill set. My skill set was the mindset that I attained in prison, my training and nutrition knowledge. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna build a, I'm gonna have a program where I teach people what really brought me to where I'm at. I tell everyone you have to heal yourself, and teach others to do the same. I tell everyone you have to create the person you admire and give that person to the world. There is not one motherfucking successful person that I know that didn't heal themselves and teach others to do the same, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, or one of those ways, or create the individual they admire and gift that person to the masses. These are the two things that are prerequisites to you live in your purpose. The whole point though is, is that most people will never transcend self. So what I, the point I was making with before where people were um, are in a low frequency state and they define themselves as a, a, in their lowest frequency is they're still in a phase of self-actualization. Most people will be so selfish and focused on them for the multitude of their life, they'll never make any money. People are poor because they don't think about other people. Mm -hmm. I woke up every fucking day consistently since the day I got out of prison and in prison and thought about the entire world and the solutions I could give them to the biggest problems I have. I have everything now. I have fucking the best life you could ever imagine. Money is no issue. And personal development is still the greatest tool I can use to live a good life. If I had no money and a strong personal development process, I'd be happier than if I had all the money and no personal development process. No, no questions asked. So the point is, is I actually wake up every day and give everyone the best answers possible for them to live their best life. I wake up and think about everyone else. Poor people wake up and think about themselves. It, exactly. So now it goes back to what you were just saying, where basically what you said is your message, your message, right? 100%. And if people aren't proud of their past and they're not willing to help someone else with it, they get into this part, this place where if they put themselves in a position where they start making money, they're scared to lose it. So they don't want to give. Oh yeah. That's the fucking problem. 
So, so now they'll they'll sit there and they'll hold this shit, this little bit of fucking money that they got, and it's holding them back from opening the gates to the fucking kingdom. And that's what I realized, man. I, 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 I have a rule of thumb. If I make a certain amount, I have to spend a certain amount. Anyone who doesn't understand the fucking economy, all these people are telling you to save and save and save, and this ain't the right time to spend. They're fucking the economy up. If you literally should buy cars like me and Frank, you should spend in America. You should buy them off your friend who's got a car dealership. You should hire people to film and do podcasts. You put your money back into not just America, but the world, but mainly America to feed our economy. I literally make, last month I made 2.7 million. Do you guys fucking understand how much you have to spend when you make that much? I have to spend 40% of 2.7 million. So I knew that, and I don't want to wait to the end of the year. So I bought a, a Rolls Royce Ghost Cash. It was three hundred ninety-two thousand. I bought a, um, I bought a G Wagon Cash. It was four hundred twelve thousand. So now I'm at eight eight hundred thousand off just that. I have two places that are event spaces. One is one hundred thirty thousand. The other one is sixty-five thousand. Now we're getting up into the million-dollar mark. I still have to spend more. I still have to spend three hundred thousand more. And I mean, that's just on miscellaneous uh, private flights Bullshit, that I yeah, took yeah. and some of my business shit. He, but this is what people don't get. They see the expenses of a big business and they're like, I wouldn't do that. Well, you don't run a big business. You don't understand why a corporate company would have to fucking fly private. They would have to spend that money. And it'd be, it wouldn't be economical for them not to. But the main, main point behind everything is, is don't fucking talk about shit you don't know about that keeps you from learning from the people who are doing. So the people who are doing, if you're around them and they're doing more than you, shut the fuck up and listen. And because in all reality, if you're not where I want to be, I won't fucking listen to you. Yeah, that and that's why, like, when I come to these events that you guys host, I my main focus is to bring value to the event. It's not it's not a transactional thing. It's not for me. It's not for me to take. Right. So that's why when I go, I network with people. I try and just bring my my zone of genius into the situation. And then it get, when I leave, it's amplified into, yeah, one, into the world. One into of the, the guys who's to a top guy in kind of our industry, he does coaching shit for some other stuff. I was watching his content and he goes, he goes, I've been trying to break the million dollar a month mark for a long time. I was just around someone who tries to spend a million a month. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh my God, what the fuck? Like that was mind boggling to him. I remember when I was around Eric for the first time, he had a $400,000 watch, Richard Mill. Flat, fast forward five months, now I have two of them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and, and, and fucking Frank's got one. The thing is, is if you guys don't understand, the people you're directly around are going to influence you. And I could never help someone who doesn't understand. That is the biggest, that's the biggest fucking time collapse and cheat code of life. And it's, it's their, their time is like Eric says this all the time. Their time is their biggest commodity, right? Someone that's super successful. Their time is their most valuable. Mine's actually my energy. So my energy is my biggest commodity. A lot of people say time's their biggest, biggest commodity. And I really like trample them in life because the energy that I can put in a fucking small clip will do more revenue than their whole fucking day consistently over and over again. So if I can condense, if I can teach Frank to condense his energy into certain short form clips like we're doing here, he'll make more money than the dude who believes in his time more. But my whole thing is, is I don't really ever calculate time. Time is always, time to me is always uh, like, is pain. Like I don't have a clock. I was in prison for 10 years. I peeled back 10 fucking oh. calendars. I went through 10 birthdays. I didn't see one female, one family member. All the shit you guys take for granted, I didn't see for 10 years. 10 fucking years. Didn't hug a female. Bro, didn't see a family member. Like, I didn't go in a body of water like behind us. I didn't take a, I didn't take a bath. I didn't go in a pool. I had to fucking take showers, sitting on a metal toilet on lockdown, pouring water on my fucking head. So let me ask you this question about prison. So at what point in prison did you realize that what you were going to do when, when did you learn that the individual that you wanted to I be? never, I never tried to make my, listen to this, you motherfuckers. I never tried to make a plan about making money. That's where you guys fuck up. Cause that's a destination. What I did was create an undeniable person that is just going to be 
a great man. And I believe if a man is right, his world will be right. I just wanted to be a good person. Yep. Like I was a horrible person. Most people tell their fucking war stories. If you really did it, motherfucker, you'd have went to prison like me. Like literally, if you really were that bad, the judge would have been like, hey, like people don't get away with shit. If you were really murking motherfuckers, yep. you would get a stretch. And that's why when motherfuckers act like they're the bad motherfucker, I'm like, bro, you don't got the track record. And when they act like when they act like they're a baller, they don't show the receipts. I do. When they act like they're a fucking gangster or some fucking vicious motherfucker, you don't got the background check, so don't fucking act like it. But the whole thing is, is I mean, I love it. Like you said, you wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change shit. And I know what's needed in the world today is a more dangerous and disciplined man. Yep. And that's what I was creating from prison. That lethal motherfucker. I looked up to the guys that are covered in prison ink. They're scary as fuck. But then I went to prison and saw they were dope fiends and they were bitches. So I'm like, oh, best of both worlds. I'm going to create the dude who's just fucking savage as fuck, covered in prison, Cali gang ink, done the time, killed it in prison, was a massive leader in prison. And then I'm going to drop all the vices that these guys have. I pull the best from everyone. And I just created someone that I really respect. If you guys have one fucking goal in this fucking life, it's to create someone in the mirror you truly respect with no lies attached to it. A lot of people, they sit there and they they literally, they, they fucking give themselves so much leeway. They justify their behavior so much. And it's because they're around people who don't hold themselves to this level. Mm -hmm. Get around sober people who are literally crushing it in every area. Get around the person who has the life you really want. And don't lie to yourself and, and honestly create scenarios where it's okay to operate out of congruence with your conscience because that's the biggest shit. And what you just spoke on is the overcomplication of, <coughs> of, of something that's very simple. And I oh, did yeah. that for a long time. And that's why, like, I had been desperate before. So, so like, when I, when I got, so, so I was sober for four years. And I had no discipline. I had no principles. I had a bunch of little bullshit things. And when one thing would get fucked up, the whole thing would go out the window, right? And then, so now I was in, I had done like, uh, you know, I had done a year in, a year in jail. I didn't go to prison. I, I did a year in jail. And when I got out, I had to do a program because I was part of the program that I, to get rid of the felony that I had got, right? So now I go to the program for nine months. I'm working in the, pro I'm, excuse me, I'm a client in the program. I did so well in the program that then they hire me to work there, right? So now I'm working in the rehab. I end up relapsing in the rehab, right? And now I'm back in the bed as a client again because they took me back as a client. That was my first real moment that I was super fucking desperate in my life. And that was when I found Alcoholics Anonymous. And that was when I was actually able to stay sober. Now in February, I have fucking nine years sober. But I still found desperation even in sobriety. See, motherfuckers don't get it. They don't realize that they're just looking for happiness in the same place they lose it. And they're calling it fun. They're calling it living their best life. All you motherfuckers out there who use that term, I'm living my best life, and I see you drinking, I see you do, I see you engaging in habits that are not creating a future you want. You guys don't realize you're actually escaping your current reality. You're not living the best, you're not living your best life. You actually don't like your life, and it's proof. Because people who love and respect themselves, they do not self-sabotage or disrespect themselves with their habits. That's the first sign that you know someone loves and respects himself. Their fucking habits. Self-investment is the clearest indicator of self-love. But that that's the thing is like, I just saw everybody as so bitch. I just saw them as such pussies. I'm like, look at this fucking lame. This guy don't even respect himself not enough to have a needle in his fucking arm. The fuck's the matter with this guy? Yep. Guys in prison on the fucking day. No one will even let them use their cell phone because they're such dope fiends. And they're calling their baby's mama, having her send them 50 bucks for another paper of some black. And that's, that means a 50 paper of some heroin. It's this fucking big. In prison, I'll buy a gram for 50 bucks. It's like that. There's 11 50 papers in that gram. If you have any discipline in prison, you could turn 50 bucks into 550 bucks because these guys are such dope fiends. I had more money in prison than people have on the street.
So, and it's, it's, so a lot of the stuff that I learned while being, so I was a really good fucking junkie also, like you just described. Yeah, those are the, the, I was great. Dude, the the people who can find a way will be the greatest entrepreneurs. And that's the shit that like brought me, that brings me so much value now, like all these years later, sober, like the fact that I could wake up, fuck, because I wasn't one of those motherfuckers that would save a little bit from the morning. I was doing it all, (laughs) I was doing it all fucking that night, right? So I knew when I woke up, I'm going to be sweating. I'm going to be fucking itching. I'm going to be like, all right, motherfucker, you got to go make this shit happen. And that mindset, my father used to tell me in those moments, like he would say, all this shit that you're going through, there's a reason you're going through it. And you'll figure it out eventually. He's very fucking wise, this guy, bro. He's beat cancer twice. He's a fucking savage. He's been in the streets his whole life. Never had a job the whole time I was alive, right? Always had money though, right? So he was doing some shit. So he would tell me all this shit, like you're going to, all this shit is valuable. And he's the one that would pull me through these situations. Like when it got the darkest, like the phone would ring and he's there, right? And that's why I try to show up for him now. But we have a weird relationship now because it's very like, it's a little bit transactional, but it just is what it is. But the point is he, he showed me that these fucking the things. The only thing people that won't be transactional with you are people who are on the same financial level. It's just not possible. True. And that he, so he, he showed me these things that he would tell me these things. And when he would say them, I'd be like, what the fuck is he talking about? Because I wasn't ready in that moment to receive his message. That's the key to this. So when you get around someone that's a higher level individual, you have to make sure your shit is on point and your shit is right. Otherwise, the shit that they're saying, it's going to mean nothing, right? You're not going to be able to utilize it. That's why content online is the greatest tool to helping people change. In proximity, they're going to be adverse to what you tell them. They're going to take offense to it. I'm like, fuck you, Frank. I don't have to be sober, bitch. Like, I have money. Like, I make money. I can still drink and have a few drinks. They'll get defensive because they know they're wrong. In proximity, they'll do that. But if you make a content piece, the beautiful thing is that's the first time people can be accountable. They can watch that piece of content and it's not directed directly towards them, but they can make the choice at that moment to say, he's talking about me, that's me, I'm gonna make the change. So at that one moment, I get to get make people be accountable and the first time they've ever been accountable for something they need to change. That's why content is more powerful mm-hmm. than in person. But everybody's like, can we do it in person? I'm like, watch the content, follow the habits we have set, stop fucking thinking you know how this is gonna work. It, my business programs, my personal development programs, everybody comes on thinking they know what they need. If, if you knew what you needed, mm-hmm. you'd already be changing it. And the thing you think you need isn't what's going to change. Well, that's that's why what you do worked so well for me because I was just willing at that moment, in that moment of desperation. Just, Frank's always been willing just to listen, and that's the biggest thing. That's, that's the people. I, I was just like, I literally sent you the money before I knew what we were going to do. Like, I remember I sent you the money and I was like, all right, well, now, like, I don't know what we're going to do, but let's just fucking do it, dude. Let's just do it. And that's the thing. When someone like you tells me something, I execute immediately. I don't fucking think about it because, bro, if I'm willing to give you the money that I work for in order to receive and I, and I feel I'm ready to receive the message, anything that's said, I'm just going to go fucking do it. It's just this this thing. The ego blocks people off from fucking growing. That's massive, so trust, many ways. massive trust issues. Everybody has these trust issues. And me, I, I've just always been so optimistic that it'll work out. I've always just been a realist. Like, I understand that if I do the work, then it's up to me to get the outcome. But um, that, that stemmed from, like, bodybuilding and working out. Mm. Because the, the very first place you're ever going to be able to initiate true change is in your physique. Like, you, everyone nowadays will be called every day to some physical exercise or eating better because these are things we do so often. And if you consistently choose purpose over pleasure in your five meals a day, you'll, you will rewire your mind into choosing purpose over pleasure and other things. And this is the whole fucking basis behind everything. It's habitual construction, creating new neurological pathways that when you sit down, you don't just go, I want that, like a fat little bitch. You sit down and you go, does that suit my fucking outcome? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, then I pass. And these people are like, how can you be in Miami and be sober? I'm like, I'm not a pussy ass bitch. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not a dumb, drunk, lush broad of a man, motherfucker. I don't go hanging on my dudes at the club all, yeah, dude. Like, I, I, fuck, man. If I heard one more story, one more dream and vision of grandeur from a drunk person's mouth, I'd smack them so fucking hard they hit the ground harder than I hit them. But literally, like, that's why I hit them with content. 
That's why I hit them with my life. That's why I hit them where it hurts. Mm -hmm. That's why I actually show that my shit works. That's why I show that I'm better than you. That's why I show that I got more than you. That's why I can show that I can beat you because there has to be fucking losers in life and I ain't going to fucking be one. So I have a question. So you, you speak about, you know, being aligned with your conscience and all that. Does that come from a place of spirituality? Like, like, how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, conceptualize spirituality? Like, like, do you have a God in your life? Like, what is your, what is your thing? That is the universe, you know, like yep. the God, the universe, whatever you want to say. I say like all cultures around the world refer to your conscience as the authentic voice of God, okay. of creation, of the universe. That Every culture refers to that inner voice as the authentic voice of God, of creation, of the universe. And if you listen to that voice, you'll walk a perfect path to your destiny. Everyone's just afraid to walk that because they're stuck in the motherfucking matrix. They're, they're being casted by society, which is like society is known as, is like, it's, th this is the sensory world. I don't live in the sensory world. It has no effect on me. My Rolls Royce Phantom out front has no effect on me. The sensory world mm -hmm. has zero effect. I'm detached from that because in prison, I had to create alternate landscapes in my mind. So these alternate landscapes in my mind are what I really operate from and it's vision. So I always was casting a future vision that I was already living in well before I was there. So as I'm in this moment, people are like, you're killing it. I'm like, fuck this moment. I ain't fucking killing it. I don't even live here. I do the work in the moment, but I'm already at that next level. I'm fully feeling it, fully believe it. I'm fully materializing it in the moment by doing the work now. But I just know 100% that that voice inside you, if you listen, will walk you the exact path you're supposed to walk in this life. So I was supposed to admire gangsters. I was supposed to become a gangster ass motherfucker in prison. I was supposed to push all that weight because back then my conscience told me that was right. Like that was the voice inside me. I was supposed to walk that path. So, I mean, the point is, is a lot of you guys are walking your path and you, you want to skip all the steps. Like you, you, you want the story without the struggle. Mm -hmm. You want the, you want the, you want the wisdom without the work. It's not going to happen. You don't get to where I'm at without having a million fucking failures and then being some fucking brutal ones. Someone doesn't have a certain, someone has a certain look on them to how much they've weathered in life and then how much they've won what they've weathered, you know? So now let's speak. So you, you mentioned the, the cars and then we talked about some nice shit. I'm detached from all that. It has uh, no uh, effect on me. So I completely agree with you. And I just want to, so I know I get this, I, bro, I'm at, you're, te, you're 100 times what I am online, right? But I'll still, I'll like, po when I had a, a video recently, a reel that did, it was successful, there was a lot of people on there that like, they're like, oh, I hate this materialistic shit. I hate all this. I hate all that. Like, bro, the whole point of all that shit is that what, the way that I, that I utilize material items is in my, my business, for instance, right? I want to put people around these things and normalize it so that they elevate, right? So, yeah, so you just never have to explain it to people because those people are projecting exactly what they want. So they're hating on what they gave up on. They're actually projecting their, their deficiencies. So if... Anything they pinpoint when someone, when someone's like, I just want to work with, get more clients. I don't care about the money. They're saying they care more yeah, about the money the than the blueprint. They want the blueprint. They, they want the they blueprint. They care more about the yeah. money than the clients. The person like me, the only person who can say it's not about the money or it's not about the looks is someone who has the looks and has the fucking money. And that, that's the only person who can say it. If they've never had it, they need to shut the fuck up and earn it so that they can say it's not about that because it's not. It is 100% not about the looks. It's not about the money. It's about the work you put in to create that individual so that you're just bulletproof with yourself. You have an undeniable stack of proof next to you that you are who you say you are and not one room you walk in could shake you. Like you're completely comfortable in your own skin because you know who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about, all right, so. But that, but the, the possessions thing, a lot of people are engaging in spiritual bypassing where they act like they're so spiritual, they don't need to operate well in the material world, the sensory world, which is wrong. If you're really spiritual, you will be thriving here because you know everyone so well, you know how to speak to them, you know how to address their needs, and you do address their needs. And you wouldn't just do it for free because you understand over time that nobody responds to free. Mm -hmm. One of my boys had an event. He gave out, 97% of the people who bought tickets showed up. And this event is gonna change your fucking life. 3% of the people who begged him for free tickets showed up. 
Mm. So this, his friends who said, hey, give me a ticket. Yep, Let me yep, get a ticket. Yep, 3% of them showed up. 97% mm -hmm. of the people who bought their tickets showed up. If you don't pay, you won't show up. That's 100%. the facts. You have to pay to pay attention. So now I want to talk to you. I want to, I want to get your perspective. When you came to my office and you spoke to my salespeople, to date, up to that point, that month that you came was the best month that we had. Obviously, it was inspiring. You spoke about sales. You spoke about being, you know, the, the characteristics of someone that is a high-level individual and how they think of themselves. So I want to touch on that. Like, when someone's a super high-performing person, what are the principles that you think they should live? Like, oh, how, should they view, there's, how should they view themselves? There's, there's three steps. There it is. And these are the, high, these are the, the traits of a, a hyper-successful individual. Number one is you think you're better than everyone. Mm -hmm. You have to. Michael Jordan didn't go into a game thinking he's going to be second. I mean, any top performer went there for first place. They did. They were pissed if they got second. Now, all these people are telling you not to think you're the best. I know I'm the best, 100. percent They say humble, Nobody humble can fuck, yourself. Humble yourself. Humble is the worst. <laughs> and only people, only people who are like literally wanting you to be smaller say that shit. And is that really your friend? who wants you to Fuck get no. second or be smaller? No. So that's the first trait of a hyper successful person is they think they're better than everyone else. They view themselves higher than every fucking buddy else. Number two is they're never satisfied. I fucking, I, Tim Grover refers to it as being a cleaner. A cleaner doesn't even have a bar. Like people say the bar has been raised. Cleaner don't have a bar. Every day he kicks the bar out the fucking way. Like you raise the bar. I don't have a fucking bar. How do you operate with no bar? You're not worried about the result. How do you not worry about the result? You're creating the man who can get any result because the key to all this is self-mastery. It's not about attainment. Life is about being and becoming. It's not about appearing and acquiring. So if you're not about attainment and you're about creation, the creation of something that's never existed will surpass everything that does. So that's number two. And number three is 100% always going to be, he's got impulse control. Because you can't do any fucking thing right if you don't have a habit-based system that is consistently operating from massive compiling education, leads, experience, and all the above. People believe in uh, compound interest with making money. Well, my business is built off compound lead gen by giving people so much front-end value that over the course of six years that I've been posting since I've been out five years, eight months to the date, that... They have saw me from year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and almost year six now. And the thing is, is that people hit me up every day from year two. People hit me up every day from year one. I'm like, bro, last time you messaged me was 2019. My program's not even the same anymore. Like, it's the same program, but it's not the same pricing. It's a little different, but it's still the same. I have the other ones, but, like, they're way different now. They're a lot more. It's You've waited fucking five yeah, years yeah. almost. Yep. And the guy's like, I know. I should have started. I'm like, do you understand where I was then and where I am now? You overcomplicated and, it for five years. Dude, 100%. They just sat there fucking in overanalysis paralysis. You guys, please get the fuck out of that. The price of procrastination is going to be the life they could have lived. Me and Frank are proof. You guys want a life like ours. Not too many people are driving custom wrapped SF90s with fucking $300,000 watches. I don't give a fuck how you spread that. Fuck it. Sell the watch, sell the car. Still got more money than fucking most people in the fucking world. I mean, in all reality... Like, you are so fucking selfish and self-centered if you don't live a grand life because average inspires nobody. 100%. And that's why I think it's super important, like, for, for my kids that I get them around these things at an early age and normalize the fuck out of it, like I was just saying, like I try to do for my employees. Dude, this, the first time I flew private, I said, I said, I made a choice before I flew private the first time. And I said, I'll never fucking ever fly coach or anything again. And I never have. I just allocated a $200,000 expense to my life a month that day. And after that, I just had to do it. So now mentally that I have to do this, there's no way out. Now I started making fucking six times that mm -hmm. because I pushed myself harder. Light a fucking fire under your ass and don't take no for an answer. That's what Frank and we do best. We just go get it. We just go get it. We figure it the fuck out. A lot of you guys are... There, there's a thing called Bloom's taxonomy, and it's uh, it's a graph, and this is the way the human mind works. So people have to know 
then they have to understand before they act. And that's why a lot of my content, I know that. So I base stuff in short form gems or quotes that get you to know, because I tell a story, so you know I know. Then you understand through the quick quote that I insert after 30 seconds of a story. I tell a story about something we're relating on. Then I insert a quote about 30 seconds in that lets you, that makes you understand. Now you're ready to act. So you have to get people into the green. Most people, they over, most people are such poor teachers that they give too much knowledge. The person never understands it because they've just bombarded with knowledge. They'll never get to acting on the knowledge they give them. So it's actually a massively poor teaching skill. And if you go back to even elementary or anything, they taught with what? Stories. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, da, da, da. The story will stick with you. The story gets you to know what we're talking about. Then you need a quick one sentence, bam, understanding of something. And then that will get them to act upon. Well, that's how sales works too, right? Like, so I get them to know about what I'm doing by my, my callers that call them. Then more, my, my closer, after they're interested, get them to they, get them approved, they get them to understand then it. Then they act. Then they're ready to act. And see, if but my, nobody understands this till they see a graph that one of these psychopaths from back in the day <laughs> really fucking broke down. And that's the whole thing behind everything is, I mean, everything I teach begins as self-actualization, mm -hmm. Frank becoming his best self, and then ends in self-transcendence, Frank teaching others to do the same. It's, this is the cycle that must take place. Any successful people that are really bitter, they're not spending time on teaching others. They've self-actualized. They become way too elevated. They're crushing it in life, and they actually deteriorate and dem diminish everyone around them. If they made that turn to self-transcendence where they knew they had to become the teacher to these lesser pupils who don't understand, instead of consistently criticizing them, which causes them internal pain because the negativity they put out, they would actually change their life so quickly. And I challenge all you guys out there that are successful to start teaching. Please start teaching. It'll change your life. The calls I get on every day with clients like Frank, I can do about four or five a day and they're very beneficial to my life. If I do more than that, I start to get worn down. Yeah, but four or five night. calls a day, they truly add more value to my life than probably the client. But it's, it's, it's symbiotic. It's, it's a, it's a win-win. So now it's funny, like, like you, you, your, your Instagram is Watson fit, right? But you're a fucking great salesman. And that's why I gravitate towards you so much because you don't, sell in the traditional sense of like i have this buy it for me let's do that you sell how we just described yeah you're, you're t selling with a story and that's why you're so fucking great at it half these guys that put out sales content when i go and i consume the content i feel like i'm fucking better than that i don't so even want to buy from them after they're I done can't. talking i can't i can't because it's too fucking salesy i i, I just want them to i want i just want people to know that i know where they are and then they see where I am and where I've got my clients, they buy the middle. Yep. So and then they that, trust you to buy the middle. 100 percent If you explain to them the middle of the work they gotta do, 99.9% .9 of people would kick out. Yep. Because they don't understand it yet. They're not you, ready to receive it. Well, you, you don't understand until you do. Mm -hmm. That's why I always tell people in life, if you're waiting to really see your path from start to finish before you start, you've missed the biggest thing that I could tell you. The path illuminates as you walk it, you guys. Every step you take, it gets clearer and clearer. You start to understand what you're doing more and more. <clears throat> I was on my prison rack and I had no idea that it was gonna manifest the way it did. I sat down and it was, it was about 3.50 in the morning. They walked to do count at 4 a.m. And I'm sitting down writing in my, my, uh, my notebook and I put, that's our purpose. Because I was trying to figure out our life's purpose while I was in prison the whole time. And I'm like, that's it. That's our purpose. To create the man you admire, give him to the world. And I didn't realize till I got out that that's what I was doing. And that's what made me millions of dollars. Multi, multi-millionaire by within five years of exiting prison with 200 bucks because I created the man I admired and I taught others to do the same. That man was physically at the highest level mentally, financially, and spiritually. In the moment, like you just said, you didn't really recognize it. But didn't now, recognize it. But power... as I walked in, I was like, 
I connect dots yeah. backwards. The, and then and the, that, that's why a mentor will save you so I'm much about to say fucking that, you know, time. The, the power of the <clears throat> hindsight that you possess is worth the fucking bullshit oh money God. that I'm going to hand you, bro. They don't fucking get it. People say it's not about money, but they'll never part with it. Exactly. It makes I no fucking so sense. I spend so much money. Dude, get better at spending money. I started making money when I started being okay with spending more money. How the fuck do you think you're just going to be the only business being blessed? Go bless that car dealership. Bless that waitress. Bless your people. Yep. Like, dude, give money freely. Let it flow. Yep, it'll come back. I'm not, that's, I have Don't a cool... even care about it coming back. <laughs> like, this is the biggest thing. People are always like, if I lose it all day, I'll get it back. I said, I don't even fucking care if I get it back. I just have to be the best man I could be today. Like, people are always chasing people in life and chasing scenarios. What if you chased what you were being told above? And then you were supplied the people. You were supplied the scenarios. Mm. You only have to report to one place. Mm. You report above and everything below will be taken care of. They won't do that though. They have no faith. They think they're in control. I'm like, oh man, you, got, you really haven't read anything, huh? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you need to get into some more shit. I mean, a lot of the top people that I've read from believe we just tap into universal thought to where like Rudolf Steiner believes that we tap into conscious thought that's washing over the entire world at the same time. So everybody is downloading the same message from their perception of life at that moment, from the frequency they operate and their pers operate at and their perspective, that's the way they, de they define the message. So, I mean, the whole point is, is to realize that everybody is really always going through the same shit. So the better you know you, the better you know everyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's so just to, on the topic of giving, like when I, so the, the first Ferrari that I bought, right? I was in a fucking terrible mood that day. I was so fucked up. Oh, we both got first Ferrari <laughs> stories. All right, ready? So, yeah. so I was, I was in such a fucked up mood that day that I didn't even go into work because I was fucked up. I had a lot of shit going on just personally with divorce, this, that, whatever. So I go to the, so the person that sold me my first, uh, well, that sold me my G63 ended up where he left the Mercedes and he was at Ferrari. So I get there and I see this kid. And I'm like, okay, Fred's here, made me feel a little better. I literally bought my first Ferrari because that fucking kid was there. Dude, if you go back <laughs> on my Instagram page, if you go back on my Instagram page, you can scroll down. And it was when I bought that F8. I bought it cash. Yep, the black one. Yeah, and I, I wasn't planning on buying a Ferrari that day. I pulled up in my so Cullinan. Funny. And I'm like, ah, and I roll in. And this kid was there. He's like, it's my first day working here in Ferrari. And I'm like, Fuck. I believe in being the man that I always needed and the client that I want. 100%. So those are the two things. Oh, Be is. the man you always mm. needed and the client you want. If you're slow dragging people on something that you're trying to pull off, but you want people to pay you quick, you're a fucking moron. You don't believe in shit that I believe in. So I go in and the kid's like, oh, he knows who I am. You know, he's like, are you going to buy this? You know, like, holy shit, you just pulled up in Rolls Royce. You probably could buy this. And I'm like, it's your first day, dog. And this thing was over sticker like 100K. It was a blacked out F8. Like 450K, it, it, right? it, yeah. was, it was 500,000. Oh, shit. It was 500,000. I show this on my Instagram. <laughs> scroll down. I show the check. And it, he's like, it's my first day. I got to buy it then. I got to make this kid's first day. I want this kid to fucking believe in sales so much that I got 500,000 on it. I drive up to the bank. I get the check. I come back. I say, let's do it. And he was just like, no fucking way. I'm like... Hell yeah. You probably didn't think you were coming but back. Now oh. I'm like one of the first people on Ferrari's San Diego allocation list, like the quickest people yep. on that shit Same. because he talked me up and he and I bought it in. Now, now I get all my Ferraris so cheap that I actually make money on you, them. You made him believe in sales so much that he's selling the fuck out of his bosses now made to give you cheaper cars. Made him believe in sales so much <laughs> he, give you he better sold deals. me to the higher ups. <laughs> so sick. Dude, there, then an SF90 came for sale that they needed to dump. They were 747 in on the car which wasn't that bad at the time. It could have sold for 850. They're like, bro, we need to get rid of this thing right now. They're like, I'm like, what's the ticket on it? And they're like, we don't even want to do this. You're, can you buy it right now? I said, you tell me the price. So I get the best price ever. Tell me a fucking price. And I'm like, he's like 610. I said, sold, I'll be down there in 20 minutes. And I bought that one cash for 610. But um, the whole thing is, is it, it will always come around, but I never needed it to. I don't live past today. 
That's a mistake a lot of people make, all their forward planning. It's not gonna go as planned. That's for sure. That's what the plan won't do. It won't go as planned. If you can't pivot, you're fucking dead in the water. 100%. So now, so what would you, I wanna, cl I wanna close on this after you, after you give us this, this piece of information. So someone that's sitting and they're on the fence and they just don't know if they should act, whether it be committing to a program or just starting a business, whatever the fuck it is, right? What would you say to that person? How would you help them? I, I only would do, ex if, if money was no issue, what the fuck would you wake up and do tomorrow? If money was no issue, mm -hmm. if you woke up tomorrow, what would you do with your life? Do that for a living. Like just choose to do that, go 100% in on it. You'll be the best at it if you commit for life. But why not? If not, you're gonna commit to something for life that you don't wanna do. You're gonna commit to a path of trying to find what works. You make what works. You don't find what works. Do you think I found something that worked? Or do you think I made it work? Figure it out, dude. I got tatted, figured out, it out. Got tatted at your mess. F-I-O. <laughs> you know, I literally made it work. I was sitting on my prison rack watching people like Rich Piana and these other, uh, these swole influencers. They would show like a workout video and like a positive quote. And I'm in prison working out. I'm struggling with a positive mindset. I've been in there for fucking seven years at this point. I'm surrounded by people with needles hanging out their arms. I'm surrounded by people getting stabbed. I mean, it's the worst life ever, supposedly. But I was okay with it. I was just like, I had been, I had been comfortable with it for a long time. And then I just started to be like, man, they make that. I like that. Anything you like, anything you're drawn to is inseparably connected to your purpose. If Frank is drawn to these cars, you fucking idiots, they're inseparably connected to his purpose somehow. It, you guys just don't get it. You have to learn to follow your inner voice. And if not, what are you following? Society? The same people who trash society and talk shit only follow society and don't follow their inner voice. They don't follow their conscience. Well, bro, I just want to say I'm, I'm glad that we did this. And thank it's you. Massive. For, thank you for fucking yeah. coming. And I'm just glad I met you, bro. You know, you changed my life. You changed a lot of fucking people's lives. Dude, I, I know where I, I could be walking down the street in Brickle and they go, Wes, you changed my life. I'm like, I know I did. It's the same thing that changed my life. We're no different. You guys, stop thinking you're so different. You're so different. You're so different. Stop thinking you're so different and realize what worked for us work for you nobody is that different i mean confucius said the only thing that separates a man is habits like th we're all the same the only thing that separates us is habits this is like go to some of the oldest wisdom these quotes from people that existed well before all this shit and realize it's all the same answers well like i said bro thank you for coming thank you for being here and i appreciate you man it's That's good it. shit and thank you cool awesome yeah perfect That's some shit. That was good.